Welcome back to Girls Next Level, everybody. How are you doing, Bridget? I'm doing good. Good. I just got back from a cruise, so I'm ready to get back into it. Yeah, you'll have to tell us all about it on the slumber party. Yeah, for sure. We will talk about it more on the Patreon. But this week, we have an interesting episode to get into. This episode's called Grape Expectations, and this is the one where we go back to your hometown, Bridget. So yes. there's a lot of themes in this episode, like what did our families think about what we were doing? What did people from our hometowns think about what we were doing people trying to boycott us for reasons that maybe are not the reasons you should be boycotting something like this if you should be so it was a little strange and this episode came out on November 6th 2005 the number one movie at the time was Chicken Little which I think is like the one Disney movie I haven't seen have you seen that no but why haven't you seen it I don't know it just we didn't show it at the mansion when it came out it never really appealed to me I don't know interesting it, it I don't know it just seemed weird and then the number one song was still Gold Digger by Kanye West so we are still on theme yes this episode opens with a cold open of us going bowling they had opened this bowling place at Hollywood and Highland and it's just one of those like newer bowling places you can go and like get junk food and stuff but at the time that was kind of new right well because it was like a yeah I mean the one in Hollywood and Highland was definitely new and the, mm -hmm. the fact that it was kind of like trendy and younger and hip yeah, that was when they first started doing, like, more trendy bowling alleys. Because I think before that, when you thought of bowling, you thought of, like, this tiny little hole-in-the-wall early 80s place in, like, Sheboygan or something. Well, I think of, like, bowling leagues and men in, like, yeah. luau shirts and, like... People smoking. <laughs> yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, This was sure. more like a club scene. Yeah, and you could order junk food, and it was fun, and we thought it was, like, super novel at the time. Yeah, I loved it. I still yeah. do. Yeah, it's They're opening fun. a new one near me, and I'm like, yes, let's go. Oh, that's so cool. So we pull up in white limo, and I'm wondering, are limos still a thing? I mean, they're still a thing, but they're just not as common as they used to be, because now it's much more cooler to be in, like, a black SUV. Yeah, like for car sure. Service. Yeah, limos are weird. And it's weird thinking back and how we used to always be in stretch limos all the time. How you kind of have to like, when you're entering a limo, to get down to the other end, you have to like crouch and do this weird like duck walk. Mm -hmm. It's not comfortable. No. <laughs> but I mean, I guess if you're trying to get a million people around. And we also had the Hummer limo we would go out in, which is the most early 2000s thing you have. <laughs> ever seen and as we've talked about in episodes before like sometimes we'd open the door and there would be like a fog machine in there so all the smoke would come out yeah and like flashing lights and weird shit yeah and they were all pimped out for us too like they had playboy bunny neon lights inside mm -hmm. and yeah they were all themed out for us yeah and Hepton only he had his own limo that s sat like six people but like the ones that were pimped out for us, those weren't even ones he owned. It was just like the company he rented from. They would just do that for fun. And like probably other clients liked it. Yeah, but they would get extra money to rent out the Playboy limo. Oh my God. I wonder if Playboy got a kickback or not. Probably not. That's interesting. But Hef might have gotten discounts on our, we use them all the time, all the time. Yeah, and then there would be like the Playboy Bunny stickers they would put on the doors and stuff. Oh yeah, the magnets. Like a giant tanning sticker for your car. <laughs> <laughs> so we're bowling and I'm saying that Hef didn't want to participate because he has a bad back. But I think he really doesn't want to get beat by a girl. But he legit, I think, I was joking, he legit has a bad back. And it was always weird to me that he would never seek any kind of real treatment for it. Like, he refused to do chiropractor or massage or heating pack or anything. He would just pop Percocets all day. Is that what it was, a Percocet? Yeah. Because I have in my notes that um, he would take pain pills for his mm -hmm. back, but I never knew what they were or anything. And remember, and I still get this to this day, I have this um, shoulder pain that I yeah. get all the time. It, like, it goes my, from my shoulder and up into my neck, and I get it. It's always there a little mm -hmm. bit, but sometimes it becomes, like, debilitating. Like, I just oh, sleep no. wrong or work out wrong yeah. or something. And, like... I remember at one point it was so painful and I was literally throwing up and he sent Stop. me to a chiropractor that he did see before because it was his quote unquote chiropractor. That's funny. So she said she'd been to his house before for a few adjustments, but I don't think it was like a regular thing. Yeah. He must have decided not to keep doing it because Mary used to complain about it. She'd be like, you know, he won't see a chiropractor and he won't do a massage and he won't do this. <laughs> yeah. But um, he, one night I was like, I can't go out. Like, I feel so terrible because uh -huh. I can barely move my neck. And he gave me half 
of one of his back meds, which mm-hmm. I had no idea what it was. I didn't know if it was a muscle relaxer. I didn't know if it was a pain pill, really. I didn't know what it was. And I took it, and I got some relief. And I remember the next day I asked him if I could have the other half because I felt better, not thinking anything of it. Yeah. And he flipped Stop. out on me. You should have asked for Quaalude. What are he you goes, talking about? <laughs> he goes, oh, God damn it. I knew this would happen. Wait, I what? give you half a pill and you want more. And I'm thinking, holy shit. I know. And I was thinking, oh, my God. Like, First of all, I don't recall being hot, remotely high or anything from it. And, yeah. and I think maybe it's because I was in so much pain uh-huh. from it. So I didn't realize that this was some, like, he thinks I'm, like, addicted to it already or something. And what that his, is half his so, pain pill. so strange. He had this weird attitude about drugs where, like, getting people drunk off their ass or, like, handing out quaaludes to try and get people to f- was totally normal but he had this weird attitude about people doing drugs and drug addicts and it was odd it was this weird like two-sided thing yeah yeah because I know he was never okay with like drugs and I say that in quotes because obviously you know the quaaludes and he was taking the Percocets or whatever it was but yeah he flipped out and honestly like I thought so the only reason he wanted me to take it the night before was so I didn't miss a night out. But the next day, when we're just staying home, nuh no way uh, was he going to give me another one. Oh, my God. That's weird. It's not like you're going to get addicted by taking one whole pill, half one exactly. night and half the next night. You oh, know? my God. That is bizarre. And I was just like, whoa. I was not expecting that kind of outburst from him at all all I was just excited that something was actually yeah. helping because I had you know probably taken a million Advil and been to the chiropractor uh-huh. and stuff so I was just like well, I never ever ever asked again never wait was the chiropractor you saw Tyra Beavers yes I love her and for some reason I only go do stuff like that when I'm in Vegas but I loved going to her yeah she would put like the electrodes on your back that would make your muscles jump around and you would also like get a massage which I feel like most chiropractors don't do a massage oh they did a great massage yeah. like really good like really got in there and got to the spot I yeah. need to start going back yeah, she would do like an adjustment, which I don't like adjustments. I will, and I have had a deal with her, like no adjustments because uh-huh. I'm so anti. But she would do the massage. She would do that um, tens therapy, which uh-huh. is the electrode things. And then they also did this like contraction thing where they put my neck in it and like stretched it and stuff. Oh my god! And then yeah, it's hot and cold and all that good stuff. And then that, but that particular time was so bad. She was like, "I'm gonna have our acupuncturist come in," and I was like freaking out about acupuncture because you know I am. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was so desperate at that time. Like I said, I was throwing up and everything. And they came and they did acupuncture in between my fingers. Oh, weird. Yeah, weird. And then they twisted them, which. I don't care what people say, it stung, and I felt every bit of that. I do actually acupuncture semi-regularly, but I've never had them, like, twist I've had them put, like, electrodes on the acupuncture needle oh, so you feel too. like a pulsating, but... I had to do that for fertility treatment. Oh, interesting. All over my stomach and my head. Oh, my and they gosh. Had electro- I mean, they were everywhere. Oh, yeah. Me. Lorraine came with me, and she was filming it. It was such a sight to see. Oh, my God, that's <laughs> funny. So another thing that stuck out to me about this bowling thing... And I have to give a disclaimer because the sensitive trolls who like to think I'm talking shit about Kendra anytime her name comes up. Yeah. Calm down. (laughs) Yeah. What I was going to say about it was, you know, we talk about how, especially in the early parts of season one, we don't like how we were edited for certain things. And I've had people ask me, well, did you know if Kendra didn't like the way she was edited sometimes? And I know the one thing she used to complain about was she hated it because she said they made her look like she was bad at sports. Like they would always take like the blooper moments and like replay, replay, replay. And this is an example of that. And fair enough, if you don't like that, that's fair that you don't like it. And I'm sure they did probably only take the worst moments and like replay them and replay them because she was pretty athletic. But also that must have been nice if that was the thing you hated the most because when they fuck us up they make us look like horrible people I feel like yeah like oh this one's gonna get the playmates wasted before their test the next day oh this one's a mean bitch who wants everybody kicked out right <laughs> like I, I would trade looking like I'm clumsy which actually I'm clumsy so they wouldn't have to do much work but I trade <laughs> well also Kendra is super competitive so even if people are really actually doing better than her she gets really upset about it 
Yeah. So getting into the meat of this episode, we're going back to visit your hometown in Lodi. And I just wanted to ask you how the idea to do this as an episode came up. Was it something you already had planned? Did Kevin ask for a hometown visit? Like how did that all come about? Well, I was always looking for ideas for new show ideas, you know, Mm -hmm. new things we could do on the show, getting this out and about a little bit and trying new things. And um, I really wanted to take you guys to Lodi, but I really wanted to take you guys to this thing called the Grape Festival. It's an annual event that happens every year in Lodi, and it was always like a big part of my childhood. Like I couldn't wait. It was always in like kind of early to mid-September type time. And um, it's like... It has, like, grape stomping. Mm -hmm. It has live musical performances. Like, magicians. It has, like, the big... uh... Ooh, magicians. (laughs) I'm totally fucking kidding. (laughs) It has, like, the big uh, rooms with, like, all the vendors and things like in it. It has, like, the all of Lodi's wine history and... They do these big murals with different colored grapes and stuff. Oh, my God. That's cool. And it has, like, a lot of the Lodi history on display. And they, they do other things, too. And then there's also a huge carnival with, like, the corn dogs and the mm-hmm. all the rides. And, and it's always just been a staple thing that we did every single year. Me and all my cousins would run around until it closed at night, going on all the rides and checking out everything. And they have wine people from all around Lodi because... Lodi is the supposedly the wine grape capital of the world and they have finally are doing up the wineries and all that kind of stuff so I really wanted to take you there so we had the show reach out to the grape festival Uh uh-oh I think I know where this is going and they were like hell no we do not support that in any way And then I even had my uncle, who was, like, friends with one of the people on Uh the committee or, like, president of the committee or something like that, reach out to them. And they were like, we do not support that lifestyle. We do not support any of that. We can't be seen. And it's interesting to me that they were already snippy with the people who were asking. Because I have a little article I saved in my scrapbook I'm going to read for you guys. Oh, boy. (laughs) Okay, so this article was in the Lodi News Sentinel. And it's called, One of the Girls Next Door Really Was a Girl Next Door. I'm not going to say who wrote it because I don't really think that, like, she's being mean. It's the people from the Great Festival who are rude. Oh. Yeah. Like, her, the article's not bad. Marquardt is one of Hugh Hefner's three girlfriends who lives in the Playboy Mansion. She has been going out with the 79-year-old Playboy magazine founder for three years. Marquardt and Hefner's other two girlfriends, Holly Madison, 25, and Kendra Wilkinson, 20, currently star in their own reality TV show, Girls Next Door, on the E! Network. The series premiered last month. Marquardt had originally planned to visit the Grape Festival on this day. She wanted to bring Madison Wilkinson and camera crews to Lodi and show off her favorite Lodi event. She has fond memories of attending the Grape Festival as a child, wolfing down Negret's tacos and icing-laced cinnamon rolls, watching the Grape Stomp. But when show producers contacted the Grape Festival to get permission to shoot their visit, They were denied. We're a very family-oriented event, explained fair manager Mark Armstrong, who made the decision. People will say that we're glamorizing the life of a playboy girl who is one of three girlfriends to a man, Armstrong added. What's the next step? She wants to come wearing a thong and walk around? Ew! Which, by the way, you know what? It's their event if they don't want us to film for whatever reason. That's their prerogative. But why you gotta be rude right and you know what maybe i will show up in a thong next time do it oh my god make a youtube video about I it i know marquardt thought it was very rude of the great festival to refuse the offer and made other plans instead the girls would visit philip farms and do a grape stomp there stop at wine and roses and the lodi wine and visitor center drive by her alma mater lodi high school present a donation to lodi memorial hospital do some Halloween shopping at Ooga Booga and finish the tour with drinks at Casablanca and cigars at Stogie's. But the errant thought still remained. Would Lodi embrace her, the girls, and the camera crews? Or would she be confronted by angry people telling her that she wasn't welcome in her own hometown? <sighs> Wilkinson and Madison had heard so many stories about Lodi from Marquardt and were excited to visit. Which was true, because I'd always wanted to see all the stuff you were talking about in your hometown. And, of course, I wasn't allowed to travel or be away from Hef. So I thought, oh, the show's the perfect vehicle, the perfect opportunity. So I was super excited. The girls attracted a few stares from people heading into the hospital, but no one stopped until Marty Pastula. Would this be the confrontation Marquardt was dreading all day? He introduced himself briefly before explaining that he was visiting a friend, an older gentleman with bladder cancer. Would they mind coming up and saying hello to him for a minute, he asked. 
There was no sign of the film crews. They would be waiting here a while longer, they said. They said yes. But I just thought that was a super rude thing of that great festival person to say. And it's just, we like, again, if he feels like it's too much of a family event and he doesn't want a Playboy thing there, I get it. But, like, why you got to be rude? And why does all the blame have to go on the woman? Right. It's not like I'm not supporting Hugh Hefner's lifestyle. I'm not supporting how he treats women. I don't want, I don't know, you know, I don't want any nudity or there's a dress code or whatever you want to say. But why is it like, oh, she's one of three girls to a man. What's she going to do? Walk around in a thong? Like, why is it your fault? Right. So I'm grossed out. Yeah. I remember being so pissed at that whole thing. Um, but like there's what can you do? And but we had a much better time anyway. I mean Michael David Winery opened up oh Michael David Winery welcomed us with open arms and like really let, let us do our grape stomping and wine tasting and they were so generous and so friendly and so much fun. Yeah, the trip went so well. I wasn't even aware of, like, any haters on the side. Like, I didn't realize. I must have been paying attention to other stuff. I didn't realize we weren't going to the event that you initially wanted. And, of course, I didn't know about that article until after the show aired. So yeah. I had a great time. And do you want to mention anything on the itinerary that maybe the show didn't see? Because we did a lot of stuff. Oh, like, in the there's... article, they talk about the hospital visit, which they didn't show. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. So our this is my Lodi itinerary. <laughs> So we had to be up at 4, depart Jesus. the mansion at 5 a.m., 7.30, arrive at Harris Ranch, which is uh, off the off the Interstate 5, and it's halfway between Lodi and, um, and L.A. Then arrive at Phillips Farms at 11 a.m., and just we're going to talk about more about Phillips Farms, so I won't uh, get into too much of it, but here was the schedule while we were there. See the pumpkin patch, 15 minutes. Have an early lunch, 30 to 45 minutes. Wine taste, 30 to 45 minutes. Grape stomp, 15 minutes. Clean up and change, 15 minutes. At 1.30, be at Wine and Roses for a quick tour. And for those that don't know, because this isn't on the show, Wine and Roses is this gorgeous spot in Lodi. Um, it had, it was this old farmhouse that they did like a bed and breakfast for the longest time, mm -hmm. but then they expanded and now they have a whole hotel as part of it. And they do, um, uh, like the Lodi wine history there. Like they have a museum attached to it that we went through and they have like mini grapevines outside. And I remember what's going outside into the grapevines and trying like a grape, uh -huh. like a wine grape yeah. before it was ready and like the different, um, like a Cabernet and a Zinfandel or whatever they were, I don't know. And um, so they do all that kind of stuff. So they were super nice and they allowed us to change there, I think, too, because... I love how this schedule, they give us 15 minutes for the grape stomp. And that was kind of a big part of the show. Like, that just goes to show how tight of a schedule we were on and how we really had to pack this in. Yeah. Um, and I was super excited that Wine and Roses let us do that because if anybody I thought would be kind of conservative, I thought it might be them. Yeah. And not only that, but like so many people showed up, but we'll get into all of that. Okay. At two o'clock, uh, oh, the Wine Commission tour and wine tasting. That was the one at, mm -hmm. at the Wine and Roses. Three o'clock, we were at Lodi Memorial Hospital to present a donation. And like the doctor that I worked with was there and that was 15 minutes. Then, um... At 4 o'clock, we do a tour of Lodi, drive by the old apartment that I used to live in with my mom, um, my high school, George Washington School, which was my elementary school, mm -hmm. my grandma's house, uh, Jane Video, which is the video store I used to work at, regional cardiology, which was the cardiology office that I worked at, and then whatever else we might see along yeah. the way. And then 4.30 to 4.45, we're in downtown Lodi, taking a picture with the arch, Five o'clock, we're at Casablanca's for a drink and a quick picture. 5.30, we're at Stogie's to smoke the hookah or a cigar, 30 minutes. Six I like how they write that in the itinerary, smoke a hookah or a cigar. Yeah. <laughs> and we, well, we can get to it when we get there. And then at six o'clock, depart Lodi, 6.30, dinner at Dave Wong's in Stockton, which they didn't show either, and then Homeward Bound. Why does that sound so good right now, Dave Wong's? Oh, my parents went there on... It, Friday, I think it was my mom's birthday and no it was on Saturday and I'm like oh my god my mouth is drooling right now yeah but I remember by the time we got to Dave Wong's I was so 
tired that I feel like it just didn't even taste as good as it normally does because I was just like, I just want to go to sleep. Yeah, I have really vague memories of actually being there, but I don't know. You just know with a name like Dave Wong's, that's some fucking good Chinese food. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I go there almost every time I go home. It's delicious. So the first shot they show after the cold open is an exterior shot of the mansion. It's still dark out because, of course, we have to leave at the butt buck crack of dawn before the crack of dawn yeah and the mansion is so lit from the inside it reminds me of that story arnie told a couple episodes ago where he lit the mansion it looked like a spaceship because the windows were so bright all the twinkle lights are on and it looks amazing no they are but the inside lights is just so bright but the inside lights were all off because here's the thing they do old school sitcom music mm -hmm. and then it like zooms in on the dining room and then the light pops on and then, it, like, all of a sudden, they're in my room. So, it, like, you know how that's very old school sitcom yeah. style where they do that? Like, they start from the outside, uh -huh. and then, you know, they're, like, zooming in on a room. The light pops on, and all of a sudden, you're in that room. Only it wasn't my room because they're yeah. showing the dining room. But I just thought, oh, my God, they're going so sitcom -y It's so here. growing pains or something. <laughs> yeah, like a scripted sitcom. Yeah. Um... And, and we finally see your bathroom. I was gonna like say. a big shot of it. Yes. So that's what Bridget's bathroom, bedroom There's, three looks like. Because people are always asking, and you can see Gizmo's litter boxes underneath my sink. It's before I put up like a little curtain mm -hmm. around it, and because people always ask about that. And you know what? I had a blast from the past of, and this is one of those little things that people uh -huh. are gonna be like, "What?" But it's one of those yeah. things <laughs> that you're just like, "Well, I forgot about that." Uh -huh. Do you remember? Uh, they used to have a laundry book in our rooms laundry book yeah so I saw my laundry book sitting there because at first I was like why do I have a binder in my bathroom and then I was like oh it's the laundry book so for each room they had a laundry book and they would they would make a list of every piece of article of clothing that they took out of your room and whether it was sent to laundry or sent to the dry cleaning I never saw a laundry book for like bedroom five or the master bedroom. What? And then it yeah. had like duplicate sheets and they would have a sheet and there would be a sheet left in the book so you if you were looking for something you'd know exactly what they took I and never then, had that. I wish I did. Maybe it was something that was implemented after I was out of room five. But it used to go missing. And I remember one of the first things that went missing that I'm bummed went missing is right after I moved in, we went to New York because Comedy Central did a roast on Hep. And as a gift, they gave all the girls these short burgundy kimono robes, like Victoria's Secret style. And it was like embroidered on the sleeve, like that it was the roast and the date and stuff. And I always was suspicious that one of the other girls like stole it. Oh, that yeah. sucks. So strange. Stuff falling through the cracks. Did you notice that my interviews are all over the place in this episode? There's one in my room. Then there's another one in my room, but a totally different setup. Mm -hmm. Then there's one outside. Then there's one behind the game house. Like, I'm just all they over the place. They were struggling. And when I'm watching this, I'm like, how the f early is it? 5 a.m.? And then it shows the clock. It's like 4 a.m. I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. So, um... I was gonna. I have that in my notes too. Whose alarm clock is that? Because they make it look like it's mine, like uh -huh. they're showing it from my room. But that's not my alarm clock. I had a Hello Kitty alarm clock. Maybe it was from Kendra's room. I think it has to be. Yeah. It was on like some weird wooden shelf, and there's like paper over the top of it and stuff. Like it was. Or maybe weird... it was just down in the office, and they were just desperate for a shot of an alarm clock. I Could don't know. be. It just seemed very strange. So it says in the commentary, we hit up Starbucks right away. Is Starbucks even open that early? Well, I think we were risking it, but I think some open at five. Oh, damn. But, and we left at five. And I talk in voiceover about how family is really important to me, and I want them to see where I grew up and meet my family. Oh, can I say one more thing about my bathroom? Yeah. The lighting is so terrible in there. Yeah. It's so bad. I look so bad in I didn't the notice what you look like, so I was just, I was like, whoa, her bathroom. We need to ban overhead lighting, period. It's so bad. <laughs> You know what else about Starbucks annoys me is I feel like ever since the pandemic, Starbucks closes earlier now. And I'm a night owl, so like at 8 p.m. close on a Starbucks seems really early to me. Oh. They used to stay up until 10, I thought. Yeah, I thought someone stayed up even later because people would just like sit out there and drink coffee and like hang out. Yeah, and I feel like ever since the pandemic, it's like they close early. Wah, wah. Yeah, well, we did say we we're going to stop and get um, Starbucks. Okay, so you come running down the stairs and you say, they, it's weird, they kind of catch you in mid-sentence because you start the sentence with because, and you weren't saying anything before it. So I thought that was a really weird edit. You know what, speaking of that, that I noticed about this episode, is this episode is the most cluster 
lucky of any episode that we've seen so far. There's so much in the way of continuity errors, yeah. which I know that's a thing on this show, but this one's really bad. Yeah. And I think the reason why is because this was the first episode we shot after the second half of season one got reordered. Because the episodes we've seen from the second half so far, episode nine, Under the Covers, that was all old footage from like the first half, like with the barbecue across the street and stuff like that. Yeah. And then for Ghost Busted, that was shot a little bit after this. So this is like the cameras are back. They probably had to rehire a bunch of new people because there was such a heavy turnover on this show. Yeah. And everybody's just trying to figure shit out and it shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they have you starting in the middle of a sentence. Because Hef doesn't want to miss us. We're on a mission to get it done in one day. So you're talking about going to Lodi and doing everything all in one day. Yes. And can I just say, I just hate, this is another example of like an interview. I hate listening to my voice because I sound so fake and annoying. And it's just me having to make excuses for Hef. Like, he doesn't want us back that same day because he misses us. Like, who can't go one day without seeing their significant others? He wants us back because he's a fucking control freak. And he's crazy. Yeah, because we're talking, it's a six-hour drive to Lodi. Well, depends on who's driving. When the limo was driving us, it was a six-hour drive mm -hmm. to Lodi. Then all of those things that we talked about earlier, and then a six-hour drive home. So it's just a lot. It's a lot to do in one day. It's a lot to fit in. Mm -hmm. And I think the only thing he misses is maybe, okay, we have buffet movie that night, and I don't automatically have girls on either side of me. There's still girls at the table, but like, God forbid, one day, even though we're shooting a show that he probably profits off of and it's just dumb like I said it before with the Vegas episode like we can't be gone for one overnight for the show I mean later that would change by the time we get to like season four or something but it's just like really yeah and um and I thought it was funny that you tell him when you went to bed the night before I'm just taking a nap <laughs> oh that's funny um and then Kendra says in an interview that she was thinking to herself, Lodi, ugh, how boring, and laughs. But how am I supposed to not take offense to that? I had mixed feelings when I watched that too, because I felt like you would feel that way. But what I feel like could have happened, just totally giving her the benefit of the doubt and how this show is cut weird, I feel like it could be kind of a thing where... You know, you're telling the story in an interview and you're like, you know, at first I thought, Lodi, how boring. But then we went and we really had fun. Like, I feel like it could also be that. Well, I was waiting for that second half. But that, they never show they it. they never show it. So if that's how it happened, and I, I'll give the benefit of the doubt yeah. that maybe it was edited that way. But they never show the second half. And even in commentary, Kendra doesn't say, oh, but then I also said I had a lot of fun. Yeah, there's a couple moments with her in this episode, because there's one with me later that I kind of take offense to a little bit, and you can hear it in the commentary. Yeah. But, you know, we will never know in this situation, was it really like that, or was it just kind of the way it was edited? I don't yeah. know. So I understand Lodi not sounding that exciting and stuff, but I just feel like if you really care about somebody, and you, you know, even just as friends and stuff like that, like, you want to experience that you want to see where exactly. they're from exactly and plus and... we're shooting a fucking show so you know they're gonna think of stuff for us to do it's not like we're gonna be sleeping in the farm fields all day right or sitting <laughs> you know? on the couch at my grandma's house just going now what yeah exactly um but i i also thought this was a good opportunity to talk about how we didn't really have ch a choice about participating either because I feel like this kind of shows up in the ghost hunting episode mm -hmm. ghost busted and it shows up in this episode like these are things that on a regular basis, Kendra would not have wanted to do with us. But there wasn't choice in this matter. Yeah, but there's a lot of things. Like, I have zero interest in anything sports. But when we get to that baseball episode in season five, I'm doing the most I can do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you show up, you do it. And as of the second half of season one, we were getting paid a little bit. Not a lot, but we're getting paid to be there. Mm -hmm. Like, be a fucking sport. Yeah. So we're all shocked that Kendra's the first one. And it was really cold that morning. Did you see it there? There was oh like ice God. and condensation on the trunk when I shut it. And so cold. And as I'm walking out, I go, East cold. I'm like, what the f is that? My vampire accent? I had that in here. I was like, who East says gold. in this really weird voice? It's cold. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> 
and then in commentary, you tell a story that on the way home, we had I got some weird souvenir in Lodi, and we put it in the trunk, and the whole ride home, we heard weird noises coming that sounded like robots having sex. I know. What was the thing in the trunk? I don't remember. I don't either. So strange. Well, I was dying laughing watching this part, though, because I was thinking, what was it? What could it have been? Yeah. And then I want to say, are we all on stupid patrol because we got no sleep? Because I feel like the first couple minutes, at least I'm like bumbling around on so many levels. And the first one is we're in the limo and I notice a spider over my head. Yeah. So we need to get rid of the spider. That's not debatable. But I take the little champagne glass that's in the limo and I put the spider in it. And then I just like toss the spider out the window because I quote unquote don't want to kill it. What the? did I think the spider was going to do after I threw it out the window? Fly away on a web like the Charlotte's Web cartoon? He lied, he lied. I think that's what I was thinking. And I'm just like, oh my god. It's better than squishing him, I think. Because he yeah. has a chance. Well, I have more stupid patrol moments coming up, so well, stay tuned. <laughs> I, um, I also wanted to say, too, that uh, Kendra takes up the whole bench in the scene. Like, she's uh -huh. going to go to sleep. But she can't really do that because we have a cameraman and possibly even a sound guy that's got to sit in there with us. So we were all pretty squished in that six-pack limo. Oh, absolutely. And then 5 a.m., we're off to Lodi. Um in commentary, you say they need to put in an express train. And it's funny because how many years later now, and that's what they're trying to do right now? Same with LA and Vegas. Like they've yeah. been talking about doing an express train for so long. And then it got to a point where they were talking about this express train from like LA to Vegas, but then it was supposed to be only from Victorville to Vegas. I'm like, you guys, get it together. Like, yeah. what's the point of that? I mean, I guess you gotta start somewhere. But LA, I not know Victorville. Well, well, the one the the high speed train in California is starting in Fresno. Random. Yeah, it doesn't even go all the way to Sacramento. Makes zero. Or San sense. Francisco, like either way. Come on. Zero. I think it's I think it's supposed to eventually. It just doesn't. Since well, do, there is none yet. But and you know what else? As we're going to Lodi, it cuts to an interview of you, and you're saying you're so excited to go back to Lodi. And I forget exactly what you say, but it's something about, I want to, you know, share how far I've come now that I'm on the cover of Playboy. And that's a perfect example of how we weren't allowed to acknowledge the show or what we were experiencing because of the show. Because obviously, like, as is expressed in that article I just read, you know, people are interested in coming back to Lodi because they know you from the show. They don't know you because you're on the cover of Playboy. Like, nobody becomes famous just from the cover of Playboy. Like, even famous playmates who started out in Playboy. Like, Pamela Anderson is famous because of Home Improvement and Baywatch. Playboy might have been a stepping stone to get her there, but very few people, unless you're, like, a super fan, walk away from looking at the magazine remembering the girl's name or anything, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, you know what? One thing I noticed, and this is just a random thing, when we're sitting in the limo, I noticed that I have really dark low lights in my hair. That I just I don't remember having before. Huh. I don't know. It's just a weird little comment. Oh, I know what I wanted to say about the Starbucks. I say in commentary that I was holding onto the cup for so long that my hand was cramping. Do you ever get that? Like I still get that to this day. I'll hang onto my coffee cup for so long and not move my hand. It's like stuck in this claw. That no, I start but to remember, hand cramp. Yeah, remember I used to say that like you should have a Barbie hand, like to hold a Starbucks because you always had one. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was manifesting. I think so. Um, and I know I was nervous about how you guys were gonna take Lodi and whether you thought it was going to be um, fun or not. Oh, and I wanted to say about the spider, you know, there are squishers and non-squishers. Oh, yeah, I didn't want to squish a spider because, like, what am I going to do with the remains? Yeah. Wipe in, it on a Kleenex? In general life, are you a squisher or a non-squisher? Non-squisher, for sure. Well, I mean, it completely depends on the situation and, like, the expediency and where I'm at and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm a squisher. Yeah. If it's in the I mean, house, I'm a squisher. Nick is a non-squisher. He will go out of his way to find a piece of paper, anything, to, like, escort it outside. That's what I usually do. But, like, if I have it, my hands full with the kids or something and I need to get a bug out of the way, it's like, bang. We bought this special vacuum that sucks up the spider but doesn't – well, you have the option of turning on, like, this little electric grid that kills it or, like, not, and it just sucks it up, and then you can go let it loose outside. Animal we, rights. We bought this special vacuum so he didn't have to squish a bug, and so I didn't have to squish it. No. I like it. Okay. Then they have us – They. I remember them talking to me about this beforehand. They were like, <laughs> we need to stop – 
At, oh, you know what? That's what's funny about our itinerary, too. Okay, so this is the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So they're like, we have to stop somewhere, like, along the way. Really cool. Yeah, really cool and amazing and stuff. And I'm like, well, the only thing really on the way is Harris Ranch. And that's why Harris Ranch is in uh-huh. our thing. And Harris Ranch is cute. Like, it smells really bad, but it's cute. It's like this <laughs> amazing restaurant. Like, really, it's really cute, really pretty. Wait, why does it smell bad if it's a restaurant? Oh, because it's, um, the reason it's Harris Ranch, and you might see Harris Ranch meat in your meat markets, is because it's a huge cattle ranch. I mean, Oh, okay, massive. so manure smell? Yeah, okay. and just cow smell. Yeah. Which, yeah. Um, so... They have an amazing gift shop, and um, I think they even have a hotel attached to it and everything. Yeah, they do. So it's, like, really pretty. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was like, maybe we could stop at Harris Ranch and have lunch or, you know, go through the gift shop or whatever. But then they said, oh, my God, have you ever been to this Mike's Roadside Cafe? (laughs) And I'm like, "Mm, I don't think so. And they were like, no, it's so cool. They're like, it's all pink, and it has all these pedal cars all on display. And then I was like, oh, wait, I have been to, like, a restaurant, a roadside thing once that had all those pedal cars, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't, like, you know, so cool that we need to stop there on the show. And they're like, oh, no, there's pictures online. Like, it's so cool. We're going to have you stop there instead. This is giving the medium they picked out for the last episode. Yeah, so they were really pushing it because it was going to be cool. So I'm like, I don't care because I typically don't even stop when Mm -hmm. I'm driving home. I mean, if I have to get gas and and pee real quick, that's like the extent of me stopping or run through a drive-thru. But I don't like usually make it a thing where I have to go somewhere cool. I just want to get from point A to point B. So I was like, okay, well, you know, that's whatever. We We can stop there. Underwhelming. <laughs> yeah. Um, it wasn't pink. There were vintage pedal cars on display, but it wasn't like all pink and so cute and so unique. Yeah, I just remember it being kind of like a basic gift shop. Yeah. And we're looking around at the stuff. I picked out a stuffed animal for Hef, which he used to have this couch in his room that was just covered with stuffed animals. Yeah. Like E.T. could be hiding in there and you wouldn't even know. Yeah. And and then you pick up this thing that like looks like a llama or a horse and it's supposed to be and we're trying to figure out what it is, which is another moment where I'm like on stupid patrol this morning. Yeah. And then you read the tag and it's a lamb, but I still, even watching it back, can't reconcile in my mind that that's it does not look like a lamb to me. <laughs> I think you thought it was like a foo-foo cat. Did you say Yeah, it yeah, like one like a fifties cat. Like how yeah. they used to like in old art from the fifties, they would draw a cat to kind of look like a poodle. Yeah. I thought that's what it was. Yeah. So we get in the back in the limo, and somehow we magically have different clothes on. Oh my god, which is weird. It is the one of the first examples of the continuity problems here. And it's odd to me that we even brought an outfit change. Was that because we thought we were going to get so messed up from the grape stomp? Yeah, and I think we also just wanted like super comfy clothes to wear on the drive there. Oh, and that then makes something, sense. Something cuter a little bit to cuter. walk around in. Yeah. Um, but we had such a long drive. Like, even now, I, like, wear sweats and uh-huh. stuff on that For drive. Sure. It was just long. And um, So, uh, like I said, I'm telling you guys, Melinda, I have a crazy itinerary planned out, which I've already shared with you guys. Which I love doing that for any trip. Like, I want to hit all the spots. Like, I always have, like, the full itinerary laid out. Me too. Nick's always like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> And as we're sightseeing, they cut to my typical resting bitch face, and I think they're trying to make me look really bored, which um, is so not the case. That's just what my face looks like. But <laughs> in commentary, we talk about that in the itinerary that I gave it to somebody in my family, and somehow it got out, and that's why there were so many people everywhere we went. Yeah, at some point in the episode, I'm like, Bridget's following followed us yeah. to the cigar store. Yeah. So we make it to Lodi finally, and I'm naming off landmarks, but they don't correlate with what I'm showing. So that's sort of embarrassing for me, because if anybody from Lodi is watching it, they're like, that's not where Jano video used to be. That's not the new art. I didn't realize that. that. (laughs) That's funny. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, thanks for not even letting them correlate with what I'm saying. And then we go by your school, and you say the mascot is the flames, and you would think, that the actual like physical mascot for that would be like a flame <laughs> ball, right. like the emoji with like the eyes. But you said their mascot is a clown. Yeah. Scary. And it made me wonder, are there any sincere clowns anymore? 
Like, does a regular clown that's not supposed to be creepy exist at all in today's culture? Because back in the day, clowns were always supposed to be funny, and then slowly people started to get, like, afraid of them, and the creepy clown, like, the it clown came about. But now, I feel like clowns are only creepy to the point where they had to, like, abolish Ronald McDonald. Oh, well, Ronald McDonald is <laughs> so scary. Have you ever seen footage of the OG Ronald McDonald, like the very first 1950s commercial? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Commercial? Did I say commercial? Yeah. Like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm channeling my tired Lodi Drive self. Anyway, so this very first appearance of Ronald McDonald was on like a 1950s. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no problem. <laughs> this very first edition of Ronald McDonald was on this 1950s McDonald's commercial, and he has like a weird paper cup as a nose. Oh, maybe I it, haven't seen that. It's so creepy. Oh, I've always thought Ronald McDonald was scary. I remember being at birthday parties. You know, people would do it at McDonald's. Uh -huh. And I would I would hope that Ronald McDonald was not going to show up. Grimace was the MVP. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would take Grimace. I'd take the Hamburglar, whoever. But just don't let it be Ronald McDonald. Do you remember a few years ago when McDonald's reimagined the Hamburglar? And they described him as like a hot dad. Ew, <laughs> yeah. no, no, I don't remember. I'm finding it and putting it on the Instagram. Well, what I was talking about too, like they show different things. Like I say, oh, this is the new arch and we're taking a picture by the old arch, the original oh, arch. Oh, no. And then we go by, at least they, we really are in front of Lodi High when I say, um, Oh, and it makes it look like they you, that you hand a camera to like just some random person in Lodi to take our picture, but it was our security guy. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Can I just tell you, too, a dream that I have, sort yeah. of, and I've had it for a really long time? Right in downtown Lodi, near the arch where we were, there's um, on School Street, which is actually like the main street in uh -huh. downtown Lodi, there is a hotel mm -hmm. called Hotel Lodi. And it's old. It's like from 1894 mm -hmm. or something like that. And I think I have the year right. And um, it's not that big. I think it, I think there's like 18 rooms or mm -hmm. something like that. And right now it's like low income senior housing and stuff. So it hasn't been a hotel in a really long time. But I have a dream to like make that back into its heyday, like an amazing hotel. Oh, that would be cool. And like do wine tours from there. And like oh, you should do that. Like, ghost tours yeah. that start and do downtown Lodi mm -hmm. and like I just always because it's actually really pretty I've never been inside mm -hmm. but the pictures I've seen of the lobby and stuff it's actually really pretty and I just feel like Lodi is becoming more of a tourist destination yeah. now with all of its wineries and the downtown district is becoming kind of popular and fun again and it would just be great to bring the tourism there and there's really nowhere to stay in downtown Lodi anymore yeah, so it would be amazing be cool. I like that idea it's one of those little dream things. I have to ask about your high school photo. Did you do glamour shots? Or does it just look that like glamour shots? That is not a glamour shot. That's it looks like actual. a glamour shot. I used to want glamour shots so I have them. bad. Oh my God. For those of you who don't know, glamour shots was this thing in the 90s where you could like go to a mall and they would shoot pictures of you, like school pictures kind of, but they would dress you up and they would do your makeup. Even if you're a kid, they would fall under your makeup your hair and then they would shoot you with this kind of like hazy diffusion and it looked so pretty and I was so jealous I wanted glamour shots so bad and my parents would not let me oh my gosh should I post my glamour shot my real glamour shots absolutely because I have them um no we did like these all these senior portraits so that was like the classic like graduation photo but uh -huh. then we did all these themed photos too for for graduation so I have a whole like book of them yeah I did themed graduation photos too like one was in a Nirvana shirt one was in this outfit I wore to the Rocky Horror Picture Show <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and then there were cheerleading ones it was yeah so silly. yeah so it was fun though I like I really looked forward to taking my senior portraits and then they would also do like put them to music like the pictures would like swipe by to music oh my god that's funny kind of like the old school style of a reel yeah <laughs> or a TikTok oh or whatever and I'm wearing my Lodi High t-shirt today just because I found it in storage recently it looks new I held up but here's what I was thinking when I was putting it on I was like why am I wearing this like I didn't even like high school <laughs> I graduated <laughs> so early funny. I didn't want like anything to do with it and they weren't even particularly friendly to me at high school and then I was like oh well yeah it's still oh, well. fun. I it's have it. It's a cosplay. We yeah. A cosplay. So we passed this sign that says Playboy Liquor. Yes. It has nothing to do with the brand. But you know what's funny is there's 
in here in Hollywood, there's also, and it looks like a very similar place, like in an old brick building, there's also a Playboy liquor, but it's spelled P-L-A dash B-O-Y. Like you can still, like sometimes I pull up my Postmates and I'll see an ad for like Playboy liquor, order your liquor. Yeah. It's so funny. And then didn't you say that they like took the sign down after it aired on TV? That's what I heard. My stepdad told me that it's like right after this episode aired, they like quickly within days took the sign down. And I have no idea why that would be. Do you think they were afraid of getting sued or do you think people from the conservative hometown of Lodi were coming at them with pitchforks and torches? <laughs> I, I honestly have no idea. I mean, I have a few different theories. I have a theory that maybe it was just an old building. There really wasn't a liquor store there anymore. So it was an old sign and it was coming down anyway. Yeah. Or I thought maybe they were freaked out that they were going to get sued now that they got like kind of international attention over it. That is so funny. Or, um, I mean, maybe because I, my next thing is to talk about how conservative Lodi is mm -hmm. and there were definitely outrage from some of the people while we were there and after we left. That's so crazy. Cause I wasn't, I mean, obviously you'd be more aware of it cause you would hear it from people, you know, but I just wasn't aware of that at all. I thought, Oh fun. We're going home. Cute. That's because we were really insulated with the camera crew mm -hmm. and we had security and there was tons of fans and my family yeah. that were following us everywhere we went. Um, but there was definitely like, there was this older woman who was complaining outside of Stogie's like somebody caught her walking down the sidewalk and it was like the the Sacramento News was there uh -huh. filming that we were there and she was complaining like she went on this tirade about how immoral it was that we were there and she didn't appreciate that coming to Lodi and I mean oh on and on and on God. so there was definitely some bitterness going on damn god yeah. forbid you show a tit <laughs> So all of a sudden, Anastasia is back home with no explanation. And did we establish earlier in the season, like on the show, did you say my sister comes and stays with me during the summer? And were we expected to just remember that she wasn't at the mansion anymore? She was just at home? Gosh, I can't remember if I say that or not, but that was the case. Like, she would yeah. only come and stay, like, for the summer or for, like, a special event. Like, mm -hmm. I'd have her come up for, I don't know, maybe Easter or something because yeah. she's on spring break. Or maybe she'd come up for the holidays for a little bit just mm -hmm. for the break. Um, but yeah, she still live with my parents in Lodi, so yeah. <laughs> it's not weird that she's in Lodi, but I love how I say, um, oh, by the way, you mentioned my senior photo and I could kill Kevin for showing that. Oh too. no. How did he get it? Did I don't he, know. Like, pull it from a yearbook? I don't know. Cause I seem shocked that it's in there oh, in commentary. Yeah. So I don't know. I say in there, maybe my mom sent him photos uh -huh. or something, but I'm not really sure. Um, I don't recall giving it, uh, and speaking of conservative, they show my old church. That's the church that I went to. I got I went to Sunday school. Uh -huh. I got confirmed. Um, and you know what? My family used to do so much with that church. My grandparents lived right down the street. And they would go and help out the church all the time, like mm -hmm. every single day. If they need a chair set up for a meeting or a wedding yeah. or an event, my grandpa was always the first one to go and like help set up. My aunt used to be an accountant for them because mm -hmm. she worked for a tax company, so she would do the books for them. My Two of my uncles were deacons at the church. And I've been told that things change so much with the church that nobody has any affiliation with it at all anymore. Weird. I wonder what happened. And that's just crazy. Oh, my God. Because it was like a main staple of our life. Yeah. When I was that's growing so up. weird. I wonder what happened. Um, oh, yeah. Playboy cocktails is what I had next. Um, and then, you, did you notice that there's, like, almost no scenes in this episode? Like, usually in the other one, I'm like, okay, and then the next scene, we're doing this. Uh -huh. And the next scene, we're doing that. This one, it's just almost consistent. And, like, I, ha I had to write, is this a new scene, question mark? Because now... Yeah, it's little tidbits. Yeah, because now, all of a sudden, our clothes are changed again. Yeah. And we're pulling up to Michael David Winery. And I always knew it as Philip Farms growing uh -huh. up, and Philip's Farms was our pumpkin patch. So, yeah. um, and it, it is still Philip's Farms. It's like both. There's the Michael David Winery and Philip's Farms, and I really don't know what the connection is. It might be the same family, but I don't mm -hmm. really know. Um, but we walked through the pumpkin patch because this is, I think we shot this in September. Yeah, for sure. And so the pumpkin patch is up, and I was really worried that the pumpkin patch wouldn't be up yet, but they assured me that it was before we got there. The pumpkin patch was cute. It's really cute. It's such a thing from my childhood. Like, that was yeah. like a staple. If I still lived in Lodi, I would still be going to that pumpkin patch to get my pumpkins every year. Yeah. And you're on the phone in the car, but I can't... I know you call Hef 
in a little bit, but I feel like, I wonder who Holly was calling from the car. I mean, it could have been anything. It could have been an errandy type thing. Like, oh, I need to call the vet at this time. Or, so, oh, or it, could, it could have been a crew member calling us. I don't oh. know. It could have been something like that. But when we get to the restaurant, the call I have to make home to Hef, that was totally just for the show. Like, the, the camera crew made me do that. Because if I'm gone just during the day, you know, I said this before in the Vegas episode, I'm not calling Hef because I know I'm going to see him in a few hours. Yeah. But on the show, it's like, I have to call Hef because I just want to see what he's doing. And, like, we don't go a day without talking. Yeah, we don't go a day without talking, but I don't need to call him. It just makes me look like a clingy, crazy person. But the only reason I'm calling him is the crew wanted me to do it because they always wanted to find ways to incorporate Hef into the show. Yeah. So I'm not doing that because I need to, like, check on him every two seconds. <laughs> Before we get all the way into the call, can I just say, too, that we pull up and my mom and sister, and I say, look at those hot babes. And my mom looks behind her. I know. <laughs> she doesn't so know I'm talking funny. about her. And also, when we sit down to eat, when I was re-watching these for YouTube, I thought the same thing re-watching it as I did in the moment. I'm like... Damn, how many family members does Bridget have? Well, oh, that was my next thing. <laughs> in the interview, I'm crying. And so it yeah. has my voiceover over this. Of course, I'm crying. I know. And a bunch of family members show up for lunch. And Holly says, half of Lodi is Bridget's family. Because <laughs> my mom has is one of seven. So she says, mm -hmm. there's six brothers and sisters. I have 14 close cousins. And we were all really close growing up. Like I told you, we all went to that church and walked mm -hmm. to my grandma's house just down the street. Like we did everything together. I have 28 second cousins. And plus they all have significant others, all yeah. of these people. And then there's my dad's side of the family. Uh -huh. And then my stepdad's yeah. side of the family. <laughs> and then there's more distant family members than that. And then I also had friends that I was, you know, my best friend from high school and her kids showed up and her husband, mm -hmm. old co-worker showed up. So, like, yeah, it practically was half of what I. That's so And funny. then just fans that found out, too. Yeah. So, we sit down for lunch and then that's when you call Hef. And then when they cut back to Hef's end of the call, this is another continuity flub. Because first you see Hef pick up the phone and the bed is a mess and there's a tray with a grapefruit on the bed. <laughs> wait, wait. Wait, Wait, before? There's something else before that? that? It's with that. When I first watched it, I was like, is that a giant piece of cheesecake on the bed with a strawberry? <laughs> yeah, because the grapefruit has like a strawberry perched on top of it. That but, sounds delicious right now. <laughs> but then I was like, the second time I watched I was like, oh wait, it's a grapefruit. And then I was like... What the fuck did Hef ever eat a grapefruit? He, not, he never did. I mean, first of all, for breakfast, he would always get like an English muffin. But the grapefruit is there because he that phone footage is not from when we were at Lodi. It was from when I was there and I'm like obviously in the bathroom or something and my food had been delivered. And Hef never ate on the flat trays either. He always had like the big bed tray. Mm -hmm. So clearly that wasn't really from the call. And then they cut back to me and then they cut back to him again. And it's a totally different day. The bed is made. There's nothing on the bed. So yeah, but they act like it's the same. I phone know call. <laughs> continuity nightmare, and there's no cheesecake. I mean, grapefruit left. <laughs> I know this episode is a walking blooper reel. Like the whole thing is just like one error after the next. Yeah, and then they cut back to Lodi, and now we're walking through the pumpkin patch with a glass of wine, which that's such a fun way to do it. <laughs> exactly. Um, and in commentary, Kendra says, "Oh, you should have had fun high school kegger parties out in these fields." And I was like, "Oh, believe me." <laughs> That's that so funny. happened for sure. I bet the pigs are so cute. Wait, wait! Before the pigs, you stopped to take a picture with a pumpkin cutout, and some guy, and I think it's the guy from Michael David Winery, says, um, in the background, "Oh no! Oh my goodness! Oh no!" Wait, because it was too scandalous to have a Playboy girl take a picture there? No, no, I think he just didn't like his artwork or something. I don't know. I think he thought oh it was my so God. silly. That is he was so like, weird. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Oh no. Like he was embarrassed. Of oh, the... well, he should know we love corny. <laughs> shit, so I know. we're loving the plywood cutout pictures. Yes. And then the pigs. And they're $50 each. And I am shocked that we did not bring one home. <laughs> me too. But that leads me to another question. Do you remember in the early 2000s, there was this huge trend where everybody wanted to get the micro pig? Yeah, they the were alleged like... alleged teacup pigs that don't get bigger, but every fucking teacup pig grew into a giant ass hog. Yeah. Like, is there really such a thing as a teacup pig, or was that just a whole scam? I don't know. Because, like, I, if there was a real teacup pig, like, Paris Hilton would have one. 
Well, and I say this in here. I was like, do you think these pigs turn into like 1,000 pound giant hogs or are these going to stay small, cute pigs? I think they're going to turn into like They all hogs. turned into 2,000 pound hogs. <laughs> the only celebrity I've heard of who has a pig is George Clooney and supposedly his was giant. I heard it was giant too. But um, I think the reason, not this, not that this is the only reason that we didn't take one home, but I think one of the uh, reasons we weren't more tempted is, remember I was telling you at the beginning that I thought Hef had a no hooves rule at yeah. the mansion? And I think we wouldn't have been able to bring it back to the mansion. Yeah, I was unaware of that rule at that time, but... I just wouldn't have wanted to, like a pig shitting in the limo. No. <laughs> and then I was thinking $50 each. I don't know what a pig goes for, but I thought that seemed pretty cheap. I felt like my rabbit cost more than that when I was in 4-H. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then there's this big ass sign saying, don't pet the pigs because they have really sharp teeth and the mama has really sharp teeth. And both Kendra and I are like, get out of here, piggy, yeah. piggy. And we're like petting them and our hands are all over them. <laughs> And then Kendra goes on a whole thing about how much she loves pigs. But I never heard her mention a pig before that or after that. Um, and then did one of those pigs have, like, writing on it? Yeah, it looked like somebody took a blue Sharpie to the pig. I yeah. was going to ask you about that, too. Like, what is that? His I don't back know. has, like, blue scribbles all over it. I mean, the only thing I can think of is they did that to identify it from the others for some reason. Like, maybe somebody already purchased that one. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that one had a special something going on I don't know they went ham with that scribble <laughs> um and now we change again but this time it's for grape stomping yes and I know this is an annoying thing to say but I'm just like can I please be that skinny again please <laughs> what do I have to do well I was gonna say I think we all look really cute in our grape stomping outfits I think so too I like it they gave us shirts so you and I had matching white shirts and Kendra and Anastasia had matching black shirts and we're talking about how we're going to compete and somebody says bring it on and somebody says it's already been brought in. Yeah. And I saw somebody post a clip of that on TikTok. And again, I look at the comments because we're about ready to talk about it. And people were making fun of us for saying it's already been brought in like we're so stupid and we think brought in is a word. But that was a quote from a movie. Yeah. I think it was like a spoof of bring it on because somebody goes bring it on. And somebody goes it's already been brought in. Yeah. Like we were just quoting a movie. Right. <laughs> well, that's. That's that person's problem for not knowing that's a movie quote. Yeah. Um, it looks like I'm wearing a skirt, by the way, and I'm not. This is a skirt. I just want to clarify <laughs> that. And grape stomping was honestly something I'd wanted to do for so long. I can't tell you how many times I tried to get my cousins to do it at the grape festival with me because they actually have a contest. Uh -huh. So I was like, let's do grape stomping. Everybody's like, ew, no. That's well, so I've funny. always wanted to do it for some reason. When I'm watching this video, I can, it's so visceral to me. I can like feel what the grapes felt like on me my too. feet. <laughs> me too. Um, so it's, it's Holly and I against Kendra and Anastasia, and I'm actually surprised that they didn't swap that up and have it Anastasia and I against you and Kendra, but I think that they might have thought that Anastasia and I have probably done this before and we're old pros, so that oh, would be that makes sense. an unfit yeah. advantage, but that's not true. That's so funny. <laughs> not true at all. We've never done it before. So then when we're done with it, I take a sip of the wine, which reminded me, I was kind of like into gross out humor a little bit at this time. I, there's other examples of it in this season, but which I can't think of what they are, but I remember noticing it when I watched these for YouTube, and just the producers wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> well, I know that you tried it, and at first I was like, ew, but then in commentary, we say we all drink it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just felt like, I mean, obviously it's not out of the question, but I just felt like with all those grapes and with all the liquid flowing through it, the chance that something nasty on your feet is actually going to make it through to that one sip is... Yeah. I think it's worse than probably all the bugs and stuff that are in there. Yeah. That you're drinking. <laughs> yeah, probably. Squished bugs. Or just were, of, the, were the grapes even washed? I don't know. But <laughs> speaking of squishing bugs, we were squishing probably a lot of bugs when we did oh, that. Oh, totally. <laughs> In commentary, I say the wine tasted like Kool-Aid, which I don't remember at all, but I'll take my own word for it. If you've never been grape stomping, though, it is quite the sensation to step into a bin of grapes like that. And yeah, it feels really weird. It's really weird. It's fun. Um, but I thought it was really cool. Like, they set it up so professionally and stuff. Uh -huh. I feel like this was not their first rodeo for grape stomping. Yeah, it was cute. Yeah. And then we are rinsing our feet afterward, and there's a ton more foot footage for our foot fetish club. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. 
And in commentary, I was saying how my hair was getting sprayed and I didn't like it. And then the sound people were like, your mics, your mics. Cause I, so I guess it just wasn't, I don't remember it that way, but I guess it wasn't our feet just getting sprayed. I guess we were totally getting sprayed. Well, it was supposed to be just our feet, but then Kendra says, they're wearing white shirts, spray them. Oh. And then they spray our shirts, which, yeah, I didn't appreciate because now I'm soaking wet, not just my feet, and my hair got wet, and the, the production's freaking out because the mics might get wet. But also, like, wet t-shirt contest doesn't count if you're wearing a bra. Right, well. You're not going to see nips. Well. So... We're going to pause now, like we usually do, because we're about halfway through the episode. We've been talking for about an hour. But after our trip to Lodi, like, did you hear any additional fallout or anything or any criticism besides, like, that article that came out or the news? The article that came out and that news thing that came on that same night. My mom was oh, telling no. me about it. Um, I mean, not too much more after that but I'm not there to hear all the whispers and stuff I know my grandma said she got recognized quite a bit and she was mm -hmm. so embarrassed by it oh that's cute <laughs> she's so funny but I didn't really hear too much more about it but we can ask my mom too when we have her on the show yeah she'll know more uh-huh so that's it for this week we will see you guys next week with part two of this lodi episode and if you want more content you can check us out on patreon.com slash girls next level bye guys bye